Unmute yourself, Pastor. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Paulette. That is so neat of y'all. He's so funny. <laughs> Well, we're so grateful for this wonderful privilege and opportunity that Pastor Will and Dr. Aaron has given us uh, tonight to be a part of this um, uh, first uh, Bible study, uh, I mean, marriage ministry meeting for the year. And we're excited about it. This is my wife, Elizabeth, the love of my life, the apple of my eye, my prime rib, my good thing. Amen. And you guys must be pretty special. She don't do this for nobody but the women's ministry. <laughs> so, so you guys are pretty special. We thank God for all that God has done. Uh, we're excited to be a part of this study tonight. We're studying from the book, His Needs, Her Needs. And uh, we have three parts tonight that we'll be dealing with. The first part is stay faithful. It's all based on chapter one of the book and uh, stay faithful. The scripture, uh, which is critical in every every marriage. If you're going to uh, make a marriage that lasts, we've got to stay faithful. I want to read the scripture from the book of Revelations, chapter 2 and verse 10, that says, be faithful unto death. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. One of the things that if you look in that chapter of Revelation, you see chapters two and three, uh, it's speaking to the churches, even back then and even today, uh, God was applauding them because of their intolerance, their endurance, and their faithfulness. And James 1, 12 through 15 says, a man who endures trials is blessed because when he passed the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. It says, no one undergoing a trial should say, I am being tempted by God, for God is not tempted by evil, and he himself doesn't tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desires. Then after the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. James 1, 19 through 21 says, my dearly beloved brothers, understand this. Everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. If we're going to make marriage work, we've got to apply that scripture. Everyone, husbands and wife, must be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For man's anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding yourself of all moral filth and evil, Humbly receive the implanted word, which is able to save you. If you have the book or read the book, chapter one of the book is entitled, How a Fair Proof is Your Marriage? What a great question for all of us. How a fair proof is your marriage? And chapter two is why your love bank never closes. That's the two chapters we've been assigned tonight. Number one, how a fair proof is your marriage? And number two, Chapter two, why your love bank never closes. Here's a question to start us off tonight. <laughs> How long can your marriage last after one affair? Just ponder that. Have you ever thought of it? How long can your marriage last? Yeah, we're not after. really asking somebody to answer, answer. But we just How put, long want you to think your about it. last? after one affair. In the book, the author gives 10 emotional needs that are critical if marriage is gonna last. 10 emotional needs that are critical if marriage is gonna last. And the 10 emotional needs are, Elizabeth's gonna say them while I eat this. <laughs> number one <coughs> is admiration. And number two, affection. Number three, conversation. Number four, domestic support. Number five, family commitment. Six, financial support. Seven, honesty and openness. Eight, <coughs> physical attractiveness. Nine, recreational companionship. And 10, the number that ranks the top, <clears throat> sexual fulfillment. Particularly on the men's list. Those are 10 emotional needs that are critical 
in our lives and in our marriages if the marriage is going to last. <clears throat> Here's what the author's solution is. He guarantees after all the years, this book's written about 40 years ago, but he guarantees that um, what will really make a marriage last, and he was dealing with all these, he's a psychiatry <clears throat> major, a psychology major. He says that he kept failing. <clears throat> no matter couples he brought in, everybody was still getting divorced. They were all failing. And what his solution was, he says, finally, as everybody else was admitting they were failing too in their professions, the author's solution is how to restore the feeling of love and sustain it. How, how can you still feel the butterflies and all the excitement you felt day one? So we're going to give you a list of some things that Spirit led through us as far as looking at it. So we're going to talk about his needs, her needs next. His needs, her needs. I'll start with the men's needs. First of all, we, we as men have appetites. We have appetites uh, in marriage, things we like and things we don't like. My wife knows when she's preparing meals, what I like and don't like. Well, the same thing in marriage. If the marriage is going to be what God wants it to be, there are likes and there are dislikes. There's a certain thing that we as men, as husbands like, there are certain things that we don't like. There are certain styles that we like. There are certain styles we don't like. There are certain sexual appetites that we have that we enjoy. There are other things we don't enjoy. And part of making marriage work is sharing with your spouse the appetites, brothers, that we have so that our wives would know what those appetites are. It's his needs, her needs. Number one is appetites. Number two are desires. <clears throat> And so for women and men, when the author says that we can fulfill each other's desires, the problem is all of us, appetites and desires, depending on where we came from, where we grew up, who we hung out with prior to getting married, it can be as diverse for one person as the other. And trying to figure that out or even complement that can be very challenging. So tonight, as we're talking and we go through the rest of these, you're going to find out that it's not as easy as it's found in the book, but we'll told, tell you at the end, it's worth it and it's rewarding if we at least shoot for it. Therefore, we want to look at the trends of men, the trends of husbands. And one of the things that this author mentions over and over and over again, when it comes to emotional needs in marriage, as far as men, our number one emotional need is sexual fulfillment. It's That's our number one emotional need when we as men come into a marriage, come into a relationship, our number, emotion, number one emotional need is sexual fulfillment. That's not always the case for our wives. And one of the things he mentioned in the chapter that if you list the number of the five time, top five reasons emotional needs for men is gonna to be totally different from the emotional needs for women. So when you look at the trends of men, of husbands, our number one uh, trend as far as uh, uh, emotional need is sex. Uh, men by nature are always seeking sexual fulfillment. It's our number one emotional need and that needs to be understood in marriage if it's gonna be what God intends for it to be and if it's gonna work the way God intends for it to work. On the flip side for women, it's shopping. Now I know some people say conversation, he say conversation, but shopping, I see some of my sisters smiling. <laughs> it is shopping. And um, while we have heard the complaint and the, or not complaint or just the mentioning of the extra pair of black shoes and all the different things, it is innately mm -hmm. what we want and desire, just like the sexual fulfillment for men. And then it flips uh, and for men and women, they can flip it out. You know, somebody, some men want to shop more, you know, women want more sex, but here's the key thing. That's the trends of men. So when that happens, when you're talking about desires, you're trying to fulfill a man, it's, it's, it's all over the place. And I've discovered it through this preparation of study. So hang in there. So we go on to the next step. That's you. Next there's what's called some debt traps. So when we're trying to make decisions about pleasing one another, as it relates to when we start dating or we started looking for a mate, one of the main things that happened 
we start looking for somebody handsome and we start talking about, we compare them to football players, we compare them to actors. And then by the time we all there and we get that mm -hmm. handsome person, but as life goes on, the needs change because we're changing. And so we cannot base our needs on what a person will continue to look like because we will be disillusioned and we won't run the gambit with it. Meaning that if your marriage is going to last, if it's going to hang in there for better, for worse, fish, poor, sickness, and in health, looks are important at the very beginning of marriage. That's why we, we want to date with someone. We want to marry someone that we don't mind waking up in the morning and looking at how they look without their makeup <laughs> and all things like that. So looks are important, but it's a dead trap if you think that's the way that person is going to be for the rest of the, of the marriage. For on, our, on our side, guys, uh, when we're dating, when we're looking for someone to marry, we're looking for someone that breasts, legs, and thighs, man. They got to be fine from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. And we all go for that. We all look for that. All of us want that. Our society craves to that. Breast, legs, and thighs. But again, that's also a debt trap. Because as you get older and as the kids start coming, and the grandkids start coming. As I often say in sermons and things like that, ladies, that figure eight turns into a two liter eventually. Guys, that, that, that ab turn into flabs. And so it's a debt trap if your marriage is only based on looks, how handsome he is, how fine she is, because marriage is a long haul. It's not just uh, five years or uh, uh, 10 years. There are going to be times in marriage where things eventually change. So if your marriage is only based on looks, you are in trouble in later years in marriage and later years in life. We're talking about how to affair proof your marriage. And those are two danger zones because when affairs happen, many times it's that someone started looking over the fence are trying to recapture something from the past. Some of the examples of couples we want to talk about right now, biblically, um, who <clears throat> fell for the trap. And we'll get to see the consequences in a moment. Yeah, one of all of us who are familiar with the Bible is familiar with David, king of Israel. He had everything he could have wanted, but one night he couldn't sleep went out on his porch, on his uh, uh, back porch, and looked, and there she was. There was Bathsheba, breast, legs, and thighs. That, that's what we are looking for. There was Bathsheba, and just got her attention. He knew that she was somebody else's wife. Matter of fact, her husband was at a war fighting for David. Yet, because of us, because of our appetites as men, he didn't even consider the fact that this is somebody's wife who's fighting in the war for me. All he was concerned about was he wanted her in his life. And that's the infidelity. That's where the infidelity comes in. He didn't think about the consequences. He didn't think about the fact how it will affect his relationship with Uriah. He didn't think about the fact if this woman became pregnant, which she did become pregnant, how it will affect their family. He did not think about the fact how it would affect their kids and, and, and how those consequences of that one decision, that one appetite, that one fulfillment that he looked at that night, he did not consider the consequences of that one night, bip, bam, thank you, ma'am, stand, and how it would affect the rest of his marriage. So, so we need to consider that, uh, uh, that when infidelity comes in, it's just not a one night stand. It's just not a, a, a time of sexual fulfillment. There are consequences down the line. As it relates to ladies, a um, couple in the Bible would be Adam and Eve. And ladies, um, just don't nod your, nod your head if you agree. You know, we are control freaks. What? And <laughs> Eve started it all. We could blame it on Eve. That's what we do. Because we want to control a remote control, right? What? <laughs> we want to control 
the household. We want to control the money. We want to control when he's driving the car. <laughs> How so, you guys, I just need to, guys, you need to know that came from Eve. It's not our fault. <laughs> it's, it's not our fault. Uh, she got it started and we just carried it on after all these years. And so, but the problem is when we're in control like that, when it's time for the male to take over, we're so used to having the control, it's hard for us to yield. And a lot of problems happen from our wanting to control and a lack of wanting to be controlled. Because then if we don't want to release the control, when they get to the place and they want to control us, there's a battle. There's a mighty battle that happens. And so all of this other fulfillment that we talk about goes out the window. And unfortunately, ladies, we even try to control the male with sex. What? Meaning <laughs> that on days when we are not happy, we start the control. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You can fill in the blank. It's been used for years to withhold when we want yep. control. Yep. You ain't getting nothing tonight. You might well sleep on the sofa. I just, uh, but that, that's the way of control. That's the way it happens. And, and that's the way, it, and, and y'all got it legitimately. Y'all got it from, for me back in Genesis chapter three, like tonight, the perfect example. I was prepared to wear a whole nother outfit. And Elizabeth saw that one. She said, you ain't wearing that tonight. I said, what you mean? This shirt is okay. Uh-uh. We're going to be on the screen. People are going to be watching us from all the... No, you need to wear something that, that looks like what I got on. That's control. That's control. And guess what? I put my head down, put my tail between my legs, went to my closet, and found this outfit that looks like her. Because if I didn't, it was going to be a cold night in the bedroom tonight. So uh, I, I didn't want that to happen because they didn't want to see it. I see you smiling, bro. I didn't want that to happen. We just needed a real live example <laughs> so that you guys would know what it looks like, right? So, so I went on and, and changed outfits because I wanted to have a good night's sleep tonight. Amen. Particularly after talk about his needs and her needs. <laughs> Moving on. Which leads to consequences. When... When those needs are not met and we need we meet the needs some other kind of way, there are consequences. And that's what David didn't understand. And that's what all of us as husbands need to understand that there are consequences in life when we make uh, uh, individual decisions. Because every brother, every individual decision you make is going to affect your wife. Every individual decision she makes will affect your husband. And so we need to understand there are consequences. And one of the consequences of affairs is death. How to fair proof your marriage? One of the consequences of affairs is death. Death of the marriage, death of the love, death of the feeling, death of the affection. And we need to understand that that's a consequence of affairs. It can destroy the marriage altogether. And after death, as it relates ladies with us with the control, destruction, after what Eve did, to this day, we're still pain. We're still pain. And so it's not a one-time experience where when destruction happens, when we make decisions out of control or without uh, confirming it with our mates and just going and do our thing, then destruction happens. And again, most of us think it's a one-time thing, but we've got a list of witnesses who can say that when the destruction happens, it happens for longer than we want it and it creates more disaster than we ever thought. Elizabeth asked a question at the beginning of the lesson that we really didn't want anybody to answer. And her question was, how long can your marriage last after one affair? How long can your marriage last after one affair? And one of the things that, that, that we need to understand is that when affairs happen, it's a hot shot. It, 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 it hurts, it's painful, it, it's a hot shot on our and uh, it decreases capacity to function because your life is messed up. Your, your, your mindset is messed up. You, it decreases the capacity to, uh, to function. Destruction of the marriage because of an affair 
affects not only the husband, but also affects the wife, regardless of which one stepped out of the marriage. Uh, when when an affair is, uh, is discovered, we're shocked. Our heart is shocked. Our mind is shocked. Our, our world is shattered. And so it decreases the capacity to function for you as husband to love your wife as Christ loved the church, for the wife to respect and honor her husband as unto the Lord. The communication is affected. The trust is affected. The sex is affected. It decreases capacity to, to function. That's why it's critical that we need to understand how critical affairs can affect every marriage if we're not careful. As a healthcare professional, I've seen it there and here as far as the heart shocks. When, in fact, a person goes into cardiac arrest and they shock the heart, there is a diminishing return that happens each time they have to shock it. So they limitate, limit the amount of times they will do it. And the next thing that happens, it decreases the years to perform. So that heart that would have lasted a lot longer once there's some type of detriment that happens to it. And for a person who has invested all of their lives into someone and something happens, there's this shock that happens. And most people are like, well, let's get on with our lives. Let's do what we do, but don't realize there is something physical that happens to the body as well. When it happens, it's not just something that happens to the mind. It happens to the body as well. So the years to perform uh, decreases only in that many times that person is just so messed up, the longevity uh, to get to longevity is a struggle. And another difficult part of after an affair happens, we find out that we're dealing with leftovers. Leftovers because you have given your best to someone else. You have given your life to someone else. You've given your body to someone else. You've given your feelings and emotions to someone else. So oftentimes, if we're not careful, we feel that what you bring home is leftovers. And I don't know about you guys, um, some of you like leftovers, some of you don't like leftovers. Uh, I always like when my wife fix a, a fresh meal, so to speak, but every now and then, she got to fix those leftovers. And, and I don't mind it because she dice it and slice it and add something here and add something there. But oftentimes uh, when you are guilty of find yourself involved in an affair, sometimes we feel like we're dealing with leftovers. And so even though I may not like the leftover meal, I tolerate it. Let me say that again. I may not like the leftover meal, but I tolerate it. I tolerate it because I want peace. I tolerate it because I need to have a good night's sleep. I tolerate it uh, because of the fact that I don't want to argue tonight. And so we find ourselves tolerating each other, but instead of, instead of being the loving, committed couple that we were at the beginning before the affair, now we're like roommates. We're kind of like putting up with one another, but that's one of the consequences of affairs. Also with leftovers, while for the most part, some will tolerate the worst part is some just totally detest leftovers. Um, I know some people will tell me their husbands just don't like leftovers, so they have to cook something new all the time. And Sister Mac always says to us as ladies, you don't have to worry about cooking from every night. You just got to make sure he eats. So. <laughs> and some people detest leftovers in that war. When it gets to the part where we detest it, you have to put in, we have to put in more, um, we have to put in more time to make up for what people are feeling and consider um, the hearts of people. And the last? The last part of, uh, of, of dealing with affairs and the consequences of it, the things that are guaranteed to happen when an affair happens in a marriage. Uh, as a result of that, there's going to be that sin that that there's sinful activities that happen not with the person you had the affair with, but at the person which you're married to. Uh, unfortunately, uh, activities like physical abuse can happen, verbal abuse can happen, emotional abuse can happen, and all of those things are direct result, a guaranteed direct result because someone crossed the line, someone went outside of the marriage, someone broke their vows, and as a result of that, because they're not dealing with it properly, then here comes the sinful 
activities, staying out all night, not coming home until you want to come home, not answering the phone, not checking in, not uh, 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 being able to trust a person. All of those are sinful activities uh, and consequences of that decision. In marriage by itself, there's two guarantees for sure, sin and sickness. Just that's who we are, we're sinful beings. So it doesn't necessarily have to be affairs, just there's other sinful things that are gonna happen. So to go that further makes it even worse. So we got sin and then the next thing that happens, two things, it's sin and sickness. We're guaranteed sickness. Somebody's going to get some type of illness, uh, ailment and we have to, in order to stay the long run, um, we have to put in the extra effort because sickness is really there's, I mean, we've seen more sickness recently with just COVID and all these other things that are happening in our lives, but those things are already guarantees. And so to add affairs on top of it makes it even harder. And so as we close this section on staying united in order to fair proof, our uh, stand faithful, uh, fair proof, our marriages, one of the first things we have to do is stay faithful because we've seen what we've talked about previously, all the outcomes of not staying faithful. We're going on to the next section, uh, which is entitled Stay United. Stay Again, United. this is not easy. This is a very difficult topic to deal with tonight. And, uh, but, but I am convinced that if we apply the biblical principles, Imagine if we apply the things the author talks about, it can happen. In the second part of the lesson, we we're gonna we talked about staying faithful because of the consequences. Now we want to talk about staying united. Stay united. Ecclesiastes chapter four says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their efforts. For if either falls, his companion will lift them up. Uh, um, but pity the one who falls without another to lift them up. Also, if two lie down together, they can keep warm. But how can one person alone keep warm? And if someone overpowers one person, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. When we get married, it's almost like our mate becomes our assignment. And one of the <laughs> biggest assignments is that we help to save him from himself. I'll say that again. If I had a mic, I'd say, I'd say that again. <laughs> we help to save him from himself. Uh, there are things, uh, there are people who would have chased him, who got, you know, who wouldn't have been as great as us, you know, <laughs> and God settled him into our hands so that we can make sure that we can protect him, keep him uh, safe, keep him from himself keep him, you're going to see some other things we'll mention in a moment that we get to do. We help him to control some things, that other word control again, <laughs> control some things that he has lost control of. And we'll talk further on about it. But just note that, ladies, our assignment, we don't want to control as hard as we need to, but our assignment is to help him save him from himself so that he doesn't do some things that would cause his destruction. And on the other hand? On the flip side, guys, we're there to save her from herself. <laughs> Imagine some of the decisions your wife and my wife would have made, guys, <laughs> if we wouldn't have had any input. Man, mm. we'd be in debt financially. <laughs> they have 150 <laughs> pair of black shoes in every closet in every house. But sometimes we got to step in and say, no, no, baby, not, not, not this paycheck. Or, you know, not that you don't need a new outfit for every event that you're going to. So that, you know, it's, it's we, we balance each other. I see that. Uh, of course, there's a lot of things she saved me from. But also, guys, there's some things we save our wives from. That's why it's got to be a partnership. That's why marriage has to be a compromise. It's not always my way, thank God, and it's not always her way, thank God. If you want your marriage to work, if you want to stay united, you've got to save each other uh, in this marriage relationship. Now, also, there are some creations with you being my assignment. So he can become a mighty man by my emphasis, right? Because I can see him 
better than he can see himself. I saw that shirt he had on today. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, you can't wear that shirt, right? And so it gets deeper than that, right? But he has become, I know, and, and who God has made him in many cases, I've had a major influence in that because I can see outside of him and he has become a mighty man. And ladies, we can make our men mighty. We can continue to encourage them. We have to be careful in our controlling, not to destroy them, not to tear them down. But if so through this needs, her needs, his needs, his needs are for us to build him up, not be so controlling and aggravating and agitating. But when he doesn't wear that right shirt, you got to come in and say something. <laughs> Leroy, it was a nice looking shirt, bro. I promise you, bro. I, you know, it was a nice looking shirt, but it just, the problem is it didn't it match her mine. outfit. That's the oh, problem. That's the problem. It didn't match her But outfit. you guys agree, he looks mighty in there. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so as part of Stand United, both of us have assignments. I've got assignments to save her from herself. She's got assignment to stay. When, when God told Adam, hey, I will make you a help meet for you, yeah, just for you. So we've got to understand God wants us uh, in creation to be my uh, guys, mighty men. And God wants us to create mighty women and wonderful women that there's no else, no one else that we should want to have the place in our lives that our wives does because of the fact that's the role that God has given to her. Here's the greatest struggle for women. Uh -oh. Ladies, this is two parts. Say amen if you agree. There's two things that are our greatest struggle in trying to perform these assignments. Number one, controlling what he eats. Oh, Lord. For everybody that's out there, I don't see no women bobbing their head. Is that a real thing? Uh. To control him what he eats. Show you how the Lord works. We were working on this assignment last night, and as soon as we pulled up this on the computer, we were in this section. You see all other sections. We pull up that section, and this phone run. Oh, and we're sitting so close that one can't fall for the other. <laughs> so we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, the phone rings. His phone rings. He said, hello. The person said, Pastor, you know that the fast just ended. I know you want some Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> I am just, I called the place. They said they're hot. I'm on my way to get him. And he, I'm sitting so close to him, I could hear the request. All he could do was say, you know what, bro? I don't want it. Just like, <laughs> and I'm like, got you, got you. It validated this point. So controlling what he eats. Many times, those of you who are young, you don't have to worry about that. But as we get older, we got to monitor the medicines. We've got to monitor, you know, the waistlines and all the extra things when we go to the doctors with them. So we monitor what they eat. And the second thing, we're controlling where he sleeps. Yeah, so when he, that's my part. Let okay. me finish ah, my part, right? Controlling right. where I'm he sorry. sleeps. Because uh, when we're trying to max out our, uh, fair proof our marriages, we are trying to do everything we can to make sure he comes home and that he sleeps at our house and that we don't get into any, um, what kind of communication is that? Um, just regular conversation, communication. We have to make sure that he doesn't end up on the sofa, right? So therefore- Pat the Mac, Pat the Mac, what's wrong with being on the sofa, the bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sofa, I'll take that sofa. Elena said, no, not I'll on the sofa. sofa. <laughs> so our greatest struggle as women is number two, controlling what he eats, and controlling where he sleeps. On the other hand, on the other hand, guys, our struggle, yes, it's a struggle for her to tell me what they, you know, she wants me to eat right, she wants me to eat healthy, and she wants me to be on in the bedroom and not on the sofa, on things like uh, that. But but one of our greatest struggles, man, is controlling what she spend. Can I get three amen, guys? I know y'all sit <laughs> next to you. I, I see that. that. Controlling see what Eric. she spent. Controlling what she spent. God, God, God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, man. The shopping, the credit cards, uh, the budget. And one of the things that I love about when God put Adam and Eve together 
Adam looked at Eve and said, this is now. God, we need to understand when you are single, you can spend all your paycheck on you. You can buy whatever you want. But now that we're married, you can't spend all your paycheck on you. When I was single, if I wanted to stay out to four, five, six o'clock in the morning, I could have did that. But now that I'm married, I cannot do that. So part of the struggle of a fair proof in your marriage is controlling, well, not necessarily controlling, but doing all we can to keep each other in line, controlling what she spends and controlling what she destroys. Because if you don't give her the approval to control what she spends, she will purposely drop a lamp. She'll purposely cut up a dress and purposely knock her heels off the shoe, say, oh, I can't wear this no more. I got to get something else. But wait a minute, nothing was wrong with that dress. Got controller, I need another cell phone. What happened? I keep dropping it. Why you keep dropping it? So you got to control. <laughs> What she destroys and realize that if we want to stay united, we've got to be there for e each other. And this is the last part on staying uh, united, synchronizing our love. And that sounds special. Pastor Luda. Pastor Luda. What? This is Brother Darren Dixon here. Hey, Dixon. He's saying controlling, they're controlling what they spend. But how you control what they spend if they stop at every store every day coming home? <laughs> Okay, so we're going to come back to that because I have a good answer for it. And if not, Paulina Mac okay. does. <laughs> okay. uh, let it, we're going to finish this and we're going to come back. Synchronizing your love, trying to get on the same page of understanding. Yeah. Just, that, just that part, Brother Dixon, trying to understand the necessity of a girl to go do that. <laughs> but, but synchronizing our love to the fact that we get on the same page for whatever's going on, stopping, speaking of pages, getting on the same page. And he will talk about having what? Same time, uh, the same the same time. Uh, you know, I, my wife is a morning person. I'm not a morning person, I'm a night person. And so one of our struggles in all these years of marriage is trying to get uh, do that at the same time. Uh, she gets up every morning at five o'clock and praise. I'm not a morning person. Y'all have heard You're me say this. Uh, 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 and when she's asked me before, she said, Fred, it'll be good if both of us get up at five. I said, God, Jesus ain't up at five o'clock in the morning. I get up when Jesus get up, Adrian and Eric, about, about eight o'clock. <laughs> Amen. And so uh, we need to understand uh, that there are going to be different times. Uh, I would love to go to bed at the same time every night uh, with my wife, but it just doesn't always work that way. There's something I'm working on. There's something I got to do there because my best work is at night, but she gets up at five o'clock in the morning. So nine o'clock, she ready to go to bed. Man, I'm doing my best work at, the, at my desk at nine o'clock. So it's a struggle. And oftentimes in order to make it work, we've got to compromise. Now, let me say this. I know it's on somebody's mind, Brother Lewis. If she want me in bed at nine o'clock, she know how to make that happen. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. Don't laugh, Matt, don't laugh, Matt. <laughs> Here we go into the last <laughs> part because our time is running out. Yep. We said stay faithful, stay united in order to fair proof and last, stay rewarded. Stay rewarded. Husbands, Ephesians 5.25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church, gave himself for her to make her holy. <clears throat> cleansing her with the washing of water by the word he did just to present the church to himself in splendor. That's why we go to the mall without <laughs> spot or wrinkle or anything like that, but holy and blameless. If we want to, uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 31 said, who can find a capable wife? King James said, a virtuous wife. She is far more precious than Jews. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will not lack anything. She will watch him with good, not evil, all the days of our life. As we wrap this session up because of time uh, and entertain any questions that people may have, uh, we've got to, uh, uh, if we want to stay rewarded for the marriage to be what God wants us to be, we got to do our part. we got to fulfill our roles. There's roles that only I can fill. There's roles, Daryl, that's only Elizabeth, Tony, uh, can fill. So we've got to do that in order to do that we got to return to God you cannot have the marriage God wants you to have without without including God to be a part of it you got to return uh, to God and when 
You return to and God. And when you turn to God, <laughs> uh, I'm talking about, uh, uh, things will be. Uh, when you turn. Here's the part where the woman takes control. Go ahead. So when we return, when he returns her to God without spot or wrinkle, when we turn the male back to God from being his our assignment, number one is we want to return them undamaged. So many things that we do to one another, and he'll talk about returning him undamaged. Uh, returning undamaged means you, you know, we, we don't want to disrespect each other, we don't want to uh, do things that's going to hurt. We got to be careful of what we say, uh, uh, out of each other's mouth. When Elizabeth and I first got married, she said, Fred, I know we're going to have disagreements, but if you do two things, we can make anything work. Number one, don't cuss me out, and number two, don't scream at me, don't raise your voice at me. So we've got to learn if we want to stay rewarded. We've got to do all we can to make sure we don't damage our spouses with things that we say and things that we do. So for the male, it's disrespect, but for the woman, when a man is overbearing or if there is an affair, we, we, we become broken. And so men, when we return, when you return us back to God, you want to return us unbroken. Our spirits not being broken. I had a friend who says, because this says stay rewarded, she said that her husband was like a good cow in that he always provided a good bucket of milk, mm. but then knocked it over. Wow. He give her the moon and then come back and have an affair or take the rug from under her feet. He give her a car, then come back, give her a ring, he come back. So in all of that, she became broken. She had all the things and he tried very hard, but just like she said, he would give a good bucket of milk, but continue to kick it over. So we're gonna talk about next, about another thing that happens when we take care of one another. For men, when we take care of each other and fulfill the roles that God desires for us to, to, to fulfill in marriage, guys, in essence, we're taking our wives off the market. We're taking them off the market. Uh, uh, it's like a, a, a limited driver, a limited driver. We're taking them off the market. And I, when you're in search for a car and you go on a car lot, then you can drive this one, you can drive that one, you can drive this one until you find the one you want. Well, when you get married, in essence, guys, we're taking our wives off the market. Nobody drives her but you. Sometimes we drive them crazy, but nobody <laughs> drives them but you. They're limited drivers. Uh, no more test drives. Uh, uh, no more trying out this. No more uh, uh, dating this or dating that. We're taking them off the market. And on the behalf of the ladies, limited tryouts. We're familiar when we go in that store, Brother Dixon, and try on those clothes. Yeah. <laughs> We're familiar. And it's so good when you can get there at the beginning of the season when nobody else has tried them on especially the shoes, get a brand new pair. I see that. I see you, Shannon. Listen, nobody's tried it on. Same thing with your mate. Ladies, when we take them off the market, we prevent them from being tried out. Somebody's always trying them out. And so that's your job. That's my job. When we take them off the market, we, kick, we cut down on the wear and tear and we get the better, better part of the price, right? <laughs> Let's turn out with the outcomes as we close out. Yeah, what are some of the outcomes of staying rewarded, of hanging in there and being committed uh, uh, to each other? What are some of the outcomes uh, that happens? We're driven, we endure it, we regret, survive, thrive, and waste. Elizabeth's gonna talk about that. One of the things, we want you to look at that, listen to the words. After all that you've been through, after all that you struggle through, where right now are you present in your marriage? Because of some of the things we've talked about or things we didn't talk about, but you know them in your head. How do you feel right now about your marriage? Do you feel driven? Do you feel like you've just endured this marriage? Like, you know, when you look back on it, it's just something I've endured. Do you feel like you've got regret? You know, you know what, why, why me? Or do you feel like you only survived it? Or the best part, do you feel like you thrived in it? 
that you become that wonderful woman, that he's become that mighty man, or someone is feeling it was all just a waste. Guys, when we do our part, ladies, when you do our part, when we fulfill the role that God gave us, not society, not something that we've read about uh, from someone in the world, but when we do our part, there are great rewards in marriage. There are great rewards in marriage when we do our part. Uh, first of all, you can have a great life. God's design for marriage is, a, is, is that we would have a great life. Brothers loving their wives as Christ loved the church, wives respecting their husband as unto the Lord. And so if we do what God tells us to do, there are great rewards. Uh, I don't know about you, but I do everything I possibly can to please my wife. I do every, even changing my outfits for a marriage thing, man. Uh, I, I do, but, but Jerome, I didn't want to change my shirt, bro, but she made me, man. I want to do what I can to make her happy because I've learned in these 40 years of marriage, happy wife, happy life, bro. So, so there are great rewards. Uh, uh, no one wants to be married and miserable. I know I don't. Uh, I don't want to be married and miserable. So one of the rewards of it is a great life. And the second reward is satisfied children. I don't know about you, but all of us have been children in our homes with our parents. And I've heard from a lot of kids who struggled and worried from what they heard coming out of their parents' mouths or seeing some things. It sort of damaged them and it caused them, some of them not, didn't want to get married. Some of them um, went to school concerned that their parents going to get a divorce. They couldn't function well in school because they were always concerned. So one of the rewards of uh, staying rewarded, staying rewarded is the part that I talked about, um, not kicking the bucket over and, you know, constantly stay rewarded, stay getting the best of what she has. It says she'll do him good all the days of her life. And then so our satisfied children, the children are content and they're happy and they want to emulate us. There is something we missed on the other one. Here we close out. This is the last part would be doubled crowns. In James 1 and 12, it's James there. 1 and 12 say, a man who endures trials is blessed because when he passes the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Uh, the two types of crowns there are, you know, when number one, he becomes your king, yeah. right? But it's so good for he becomes king of your heart but when he becomes king of God's heart, when he gives everything to God, he will give everything to you. And then you becoming queen, queen of his heart and queen of God's heart. We close out with this closing from Malachi. The Bible says in the book of Malachi, as we come to a close, chapter two, verses 13 through 16. And this is another thing that you do. You cover the Lord's altar with tears, with weeping and groaning, because he no longer respects your offerings or receive them gladly from your hands. Yet you ask, for what reason? Because the Lord has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have acted treacherously against her, though she was your marriage partner and your wife by covenant. Didn't the one God make us with a remnant of his life breath? And what does the one God seek? He seeks a godly offspring. So watch yourselves carefully and do not act treacherously against the wife of your youth. If he hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord God of Israel, he covers his garment with injustice, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, watch yourselves carefully and do not act treacherously. Second chapter, real quickly. We, we, we wanted to emphasize the first chapter because it talks about how to fair proof your marriage. Real briefly, the second chapter says, why your love bank never closes. Why your love bank never closes. Number one, it says it's always making withdrawals and deposits. When we go through things, we're always making withdrawals and deposits, even when we don't realize it. And get this, affairs make the largest withdrawals. Affairs make the, we're always making either deposits or withdrawals from our love bank. Uh, brothers in our life, ladies in our life, always making either deposits or withdrawals. However, you need to understand that when we have an affair, that the largest withdrawal that can leave the marriage in red. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, however, we must realize 
that if we want to meet each other's need, we make the largest deposits. Affairs are withdrawals, but if we really want to meet the largest, uh, uh, meet each other's needs, we must make the largest deposits. Brothers, sisters, help us to a fair proof your marriage. Help each other to a fair proof your marriage. So I close with this question from a very popular commercial. Thank you, Pastor Will. Thank you, Dr. Lord, for giving us this privilege. But I close with this statement. After all we've talked about tonight, after all we've dealt with talking about a fair proof in your marriage, the bottom line is what's in your bank. In other words, what's in your wallet? God bless <laughs> y'all. God keep y'all. Thank y'all for letting us share tonight. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord for the Luders, guys. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. That was awesome. Very good. Amen. Totally, totally a blessing. Thank you, guys. And you look like you had a great time, too. Right. <laughs> yeah, even, like, though I didn't like, even though I didn't like this outfit, I had a good time. <laughs> awesome. Well, praise the Lord. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Kenyatta, and she'll give us some announcements. Pastor, Pastor Will. Yeah. Um, we have one question. We have one question. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'm going uh, to unmute them. Mr. Um, Carey? Oh. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, who's the book by? The book is by William no, Willard. Willard F. Harley. William Harley. Willard F. Harley. His needs, it's an incredible book. It's an old book, but it has some incredible principles uh, that all of us can relate to during this time. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions? Hi, Dad. This is Scott. Hey, Pastor Luna. Hey, Sister. Hey, how y'all doing? Good. <laughs> Are the notes from you guys talk tonight on the website or anywhere? No, but should we, um, Pastor Will, we can make it available because we wrote them out ourselves. And so you find out that most of what's in the book, they're giving examples of scenarios of things that happen. And okay. so the notes are basically ours. So Pastor Will will talk to you about it and talk about how we can put that on the website. If you, if yeah, you and we, uh, we're recording tonight's session, so we'll make it available. Okay. On the district okay. Website. Yeah, okay, great. Great. Okay. Thank you. Now, Brother Dixon had a question. Is he, is, does he like us to answer that question? Why does she go from one store to the next? <laughs> every day, every day, every yes, day. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. All right, I there you go, Beth. <laughs> So is it a female question? I mean, so yeah, the, thing, the thing is, you know, we want to please our mates so much until we're just not going to settle for anything in one store. So, because that's the, pre, the uh, uh, what is it, prefabricated thing? Ah. We're not going to settle for just anything. It's amazing, literally. Let's do this, Brother Dixon. This came from a different place. This came from, this came from a different place. This came from a different place. These all came from the same place. That's the kind of, he I just, doesn't like the hunt. I, I, know what now, I, want, I know what I want. I go get it and come home. So it's kind of a male and female personality thing, Brother Dixon. You know, you in the class and we talked about personalities, right? And so that's a personality. Now, all women don't go on the hunt like that. It depends on their personality. But a person who has real personality and real life, the odd of personality, who likes to just explode and enjoy life, she will go from place to place more often because she is inspired by that shopping spree. I mean, she's just not going, you know how you guys watch the football games like early oh. Sunday way to the end? Uh, it's the same kind of comparison. <laughs> it really is. I mean, think about it, right, ladies? Do I have any ladies out there? Is it the same kind of thing, the hunt, right? And so, or surfing the channels for different things, right? A lot of that's still for the dare, and you know that we talked about it in, um, in new members, uh, that it is personality driven. So every woman doesn't go from every shop to other. As a matter of fact, I know some ladies who hate shopping, 
but just know that if you have a woman who shops like that, she is a Jew. Yes. She is trying to make you happier than you can ever be. Well, let me just also say this. The book is entitled His Needs, Her Needs. Yes. And obviously in some of our wives, not in all of them, she has a need to shop. She has a need to shop. There's nothing wrong with that if y'all sit down and communicate and talk about a, a, a budget, talk about what ki- she can spend, what she cannot spend, realizing that their need, if she has that need, we just got to make sure we communicate about it and make sure it's not throwing the budget out of content, make sure we got money to pay our bills, make sure we got money to buy things in the house. So it, it's something that, that, that we need to talk about, we need to discuss. And if we talk about it and discuss it, if it makes her happy and it doesn't bother you, then that's something that can be worked out. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Now, listen, you don't complain when you go to Victoria's Secrets, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. No, I- <laughs> she just don't go enough. She just don't go enough. I got hey, you. Bro. Fill the bank. Fill the bank. <laughs> fill you know, the make, bank. make that deposit. Make that deposit. Any make other questions, deposit. guys? I'm sorry. Any other questions? Any other questions? Just, Pastor Will, just before we close out, I have one last thing. Well, it'll be good. Be quick. So whatever you got to do, I got one last thing before we close out. It don't have to be now. Whenever we're at the end. Oh, okay. Um, any, any other questions? Okay, Kenyatta. All right. Thank you, Pastor Luder, Luder and Sister Luder. That was amazing. Yep. We've been over here cracking up. Oko's been talking about me saying, maybe I don't stop at five stores, but I'm still just as dangerous. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay, Bridgette, you have the flyer? Okay, second. Uh, All right. All right. To continue with those workout goals that we, that everyone has going on for this uh, new year. Uh, We're having our first couples workout. It's going to be January the 30th, which will be Saturday from 8 to 8.45. Uh, Please go to the church's website uh, to make sure that you're registered. So that's very important that you actually go to the website to register. Thank you. All right. Next one. All right. We are having an evening of romance, endless love. This is our Valentine's... uh, event this year of course it's virtual because of COVID Um, but even though you're going to be in your home we are encouraging you to create a romantic dinner atmosphere Mm. cook or order your meals to be ready by the time that the event starts and dress up if you want to um, decorate the house whatever make sure those kids are in bed or you have a babysitter and they are gone on Friday, no leftovers, no leftovers, no leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, February the 12th, uh, from 7 to 8.45. And for this event, registration is also required. Our speakers for the evening are Pastor Edward and Sister Renata Joseph from the St. Mary Missionary Baptist Church. Um, we wanted to mention that uh, we know that there have been some folks that have been having some issues with the registration. Um, registration is required for the events because we had a, a breach in security back in the fall. And so um, it's important that you register. And if you have any issues uh, with the registration, just give us a call and we can help walk you through it. Um, the biggest thing to remember is that the meeting ID and passcode that's at the bottom of the screen when you receive a confirmation email Um, From Zoom, that is if you are connecting uh, via your phone, if you are calling from your phone. But you have to click on the link that says click here to join and the password right below that um, to to join our our meetings after you get the confirmation email. Um, There will not be an enrichment session uh, in February. Our next session will be in March. We're not having a four Tuesday enrichment session um, in February, because we want you to join us for our Valentine's social. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, the last thing, we have a couple of books that we want to give away um, from this study that we have started um, tonight. And if you would, because the chat function is not available tonight for, for some reason, um, send us an email at franklinabcmarriageministry at gmail.com. That's franklinabcmarriageministry at gmail.com. And we will pull um, names to give away a couple of books from the study, His Needs, Her Needs. I think I covered everything. Good job, Kenya. Good job. <laughs> All right, Pastor Lutus, in your hands. I had one more thing I needed to say. Everyone, you may not be aware, some of you are. Today is Pastor Will Lord's birthday. Amen. So before we close out, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. What a blessing. I'm so grateful and thankful to have everybody on the call. What a blessing to see your faces. Yeah. It's always a joy to fellowship with you guys. And I made 40 years old today, y'all. So Get out of here. 40 years. <laughs> That's a good job. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm so baby. Good care, man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to well, guys, right where you are, again, we're going to make the uh, recording available on our marriage ministry website. I'm sure you can get an email from uh, Sister Nicole about that, so be on the lookout for that. But right where you are, we're going to close out tonight's session uh, with the prayer. Let's, let's, go, let's go before God. God, we glorify you, we praise you, we thank you, God, for what you have done. Thank you, God, for how you use Pastor and Sister Luda on tonight to encourage every marriage gathered. Now, I pray that you would strengthen marriages. I pray that every marriage on this call is a fair proof. I pray that every marriage on this call is closer, God, together as a result of what we learn. We love you, Father God, for what you're doing with us here in the city of New Orleans at Franklin Avenue Baptist Church. Bless our senior pastor and his wife, Father God, and give him the strength to continue to lead us to minister in these dark and dying days. We love you, Lord God. We praise you. We magnify you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Let us all say Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. Good to see y'all. Lacoste. Good to see y'all. God bless y'all. God bless you. Dr. <laughs> Matheny Beverly, good to see y'all. Corday, Dion, good to Thank see y'all. All of you, God bless y'all. What a joy. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Good to all see right. y'all. Thank God for all of y'all. All right. Paris, the four. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Love y'all. Miss y'all. Amen. Amen. Miss y'all. All right. When we get back in, Cordell, you got to sing a song oh, somewhere. Amen. 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 <laughs> keep, keep Pastor, you can have your um, cream donuts tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Keith. Get those donuts tomorrow. <laughs> keep it yeah. keep it uh, uh, yeah. 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 Tell me, because he didn't get here. Oh, oh. Pastor, oh. the is, he couldn't get here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Eric and Adrian Page, good to see y'all. The moves. God bless y'all. Hank and Sheila, God bless y'all. Sherry and Mark, God bless y'all. Man, I miss all of them. Love y'all. God bless you. What it is. I see y'all a long time. I know. I was so happy to see you. Donald and Shannon Mines. Good to see y'all. Donald Mines in Georgia. Where are they? In Georgia. In Georgia. In Georgia. Why is it? Dr. Matheny Beverly, good to see y'all as always. That's all of y'all. Oh, okay. Y'all have a good night. Good night, guys. Good night. Happy birthday, Pastor Will. Happy birthday. Good night. Good to see you. Hey, y'all dressed alike. <laughs> They're not dressing like they got the same color. They got the same color. That's what I'm saying. God bless y'all. Bless the blue sun. God bless y'all. Amen. Across the screen, it looks turquoise. I'm telling you. <laughs> it does. It does. Wow. Thank y'all. Miss y'all. Love y'all.
Good night. 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 Eric and Adrian, good to see y'all. Love y'all. Good to see see you, Pastor. Love you guys. Where's that little short boy? (laughs) Eric and Come here, hurry, hurry, hurry. Come on, come on. Oh, my God. When I saw him the last time,